we're going to talk about the spiritual practice of worship. And not just worship, but worship that's informed and guided by the scripture. So when we practice worship that's um, guided by the word of God, we are not only um, adoring God with our feelings, but with specific attributes that we are taught by the holy um, inspired word of God. So we're going to use the passage 1 Timothy 1.17 to guide our worship together. Let me look that up and read it to you. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. If we have the proper view, the right view of who God is, based on what the scripture teaches us, then we can worship him in spirit and in truth, not just with our feelings, which can be fickle and can be um, inaccurate at times. Um, this week, as you practice the spiritual discipline of worship, it, I would encourage you to either do it alone or in a small group and take about 15 minutes to sit with this passage that we just read and use those attributes of God to direct your prayers. And then um, in worship, we're, we're moving what we feel in our heart and our soul into words, putting it into words and worshiping God that way. So take about 15 minutes and work through the verse bit by bit and just pray to the Lord and enjoy his presence and lift him up in your heart. And we practiced this a little while ago as a group here, and it was so sweet. Um, it started off a little cerebral, and then as the minutes went by, it got deeper into our hearts, and um, we found that we were really in awe of God by the end of the time period, and expecting that he would move in us and through us as the day progressed. So we came away really quite joyful and anticipating good things to come of it. I thought that was pretty amazing, that by worshiping God, we ourselves were transformed. So I hope you enjoy this practice this week. God bless you. Singing is an opportunity for us to express the character of God, and it's a, um, a way to pour out our praise to him. Um, and so we'd like to invite you to do that with us as we, as we sing a song. So let's worship our Lord together. Let the words remind you of the God that you're worshiping. Let 
blessed and honor strengthened, glory and power be to you. Like many kids, I grew up riding my bike. I had this cool chrome uh, BMX style bike with a sissy bar that I thought was the coolest thing in the world. And I would take my 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 uh, spare baseball cards, the ones I had duplicates of, and I would um, use clothespins to stick them in the spokes of the tires to make it sound like a motorcycle. Uh, some of you did that as well, and some of you may do that now. I don't know. But uh, I sure had a ball riding that bike. And, and in my, the neighborhood I grew up in, we had... Um, curbs but no sidewalks right so so our neighbors and and us our lawns would go to the street but then there's a curb just a like a six inch curb and and i used to ride my bike all over town and and go into driveways and like jump off those curbs like you know like evil knievel because uh, i was that good on my bike but uh i used to try to do this thing where i would ride down the curb 
like I try to stay center right on the curb. And uh, I learned something profound on accident. And, and it, it's amazing how many times this has come back to save me and help me in life. But uh, as I was riding down, I would look down at the curb. And as I focused down at the curb, trying to keep my, you know, three inch wheel or tire on a six inch curb as it kind of meanders through the neighborhood. And always after 10 feet, I would go off the curb. I would go off the curb. But what I learned that if I look up, instead of focusing down on the curb, if I focused up on where I was going, I could cruise. I could ride forever. If I focused down on the curb, I'd crash. If I focus up, I'd cruise. And boy, that was a revelation. I felt like I learned the most important life hack of all time. Uh, and I did that all over. I would ride on the curbs all over once I figured that out. Where are we going with this? Well, here's the principle. Where we look is where we go. That's really important. Where we look is where we go. And as we're introducing these rhythms of, of worship um, and scripture this week, so worship and scripture, uh, it's really to help us with our focus. Where do we focus? Because where we focus is where we go. Where we look is where we go. If we focus on our problems, we are going to obsess all about our problems. If you focus on the solution, you will find your problems don't seem so big. So. In this, uh, this rhythm of worship and scripture, we're inviting you to focus your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strengths on the solution to any problem that you're facing. And not to oversimplify it, but I truly mean this. The answer to whatever problem is Jesus. And, and I know the arguments that are come, yeah, but, yeah, but, but, but stick with me on this. Uh, the core desire of every one of our problems is not that our problems are fixed. I think we're mature enough to be able to understand that life has problems. Um, what we really want is peace in the midst of the storm and strength to endure and power to overcome and the presence of mind to be a presence of joy in the midst of whatever life throws at us that day. I believe that it's crucially important in our spiritual health that we have to establish this heart posture of regularly directing our minds and hearts to the greatness of God, to have a high view of who God is because we need it. And here's what I mean by we need it. I believe that if we're facing every day appropriately, there should be a constant sense of danger. And, and, and just here's what I mean. If you're doing any, anything meaningful that day, and I hope you are, because there's not much worse than a life full of like doing nothing meaningful. Um, but if you're going to do anything meaningful that day, that means that there is a risk that's, that something will go wrong and that it will be negative because the thing you're trying to do is meaningful. And if it's not done, right, there's a risk there. So there's always a sense of awareness of danger if something could go wrong. That's just a, a meaningful existence in my mind. But if all you do is focus down on the problems, the potential, they're not even problems at this point, they're potential problems, you're never going to focus up and be able to cruise to where you're going. You get it? So when we adopt a spiritual rhythm of focusing up on God and who he is and who we are in him, we find the peace that we need to accomplish the things that he has for us that day. Who do we focus on? We focus on God. We focus on God and his nature. We focus on God and his plan. We focus God on and, and our relationship with him. What does it mean for us to be God's children and God's people? We focus, and, and when we focus on those things and we put God in his high place, you will find that what happens is when you, when you talk about those things, when you start living out those things, that is what worship is. And boy, I can't tell you how, how profound it is for me to be able to, to use the scripture to direct my mind and heart to who God is. And, and the reason why I need to use scripture is because if I just leave it up to my heart, 
um, God would look very different, <laughs> wouldn't he? Like, what would God look like if you were to decide what God would do today and what decisions he would make today? It'd be very different. I can't imagine a world where I would pray, God, help me make a huge mistake today to where I get fired from my job and I finally learn the lesson that I need to learn to pay attention to this detail so I can accomplish whatever great thing you have for me in the future. Like, that wouldn't be the path I would set out for my future. It's not the future I pray for my children, that God, please give them lots of struggles in their life. And, uh, but it just seems that God uses the struggles of life to make us stronger and make us better. And so what we need is a, a objective view of who God is that is forever and never changing. And that's what we get in scripture. So we ask you to focus your worship of who God is. And that's just the right view, the high view of God but it's shaped and framed by what scripture says is the character of God, who we are to him, um, what is his purpose, right? And, and once you start to grasp that, your heart will respond with a heart of worship. So we, we, if we stop staring at the problem and start staring at the solution, you will find that you will have the peace and perspective to not only accomplish what God has for you today, but to be able to handle the things that may or may go wrong. So I love Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, and 30, where Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This week, let's take 15 to 20 minutes, either alone or with friends or family, and read 1 Timothy 1.17 together and reflect on the nature of God revealed through this scripture, and you will find rest. That's the promise. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let's go be the church.